that is serious stuff because the level of evidence is higher than there's RCTs. I just want to remind you. So this is, this is <laughs> It is not. <laughs> so the, the question is why to perform a systematic review or a meta-analysis. The point is that every day, uh, thousands of papers are published about one spe specific research uh, topic. So systematic reviews and meta-analysis are really, really good to summarize what, is the, uh, what are the ev evidences about a uh, medical issue. So this is the definition of a systematic review. A systematic review uh, is conducted according to clearly state uh, scientific research methods, and it's designed to minimize biases and errors inherent to traditional narrative reviews. It's possible to have two approaches. One approach is a qualitative synthesis, synthesis of uh, studies available on one topic, and this is a systematic review. Another point is to perform an anal analytic analysis of what is published about one topic, and this is a meta-analysis, actually. One of the most important issues when we perform this kind of studies is the hypothesis, of course, and as for randomized clinical trials or um, observational studies, the hypothesis must be conceived a priori. These are the stages to perform a, meta a systematic review or, if it's possible, a meta-analysis. They are four steps. The first one, we have, of course, established our hypothesis. Uh, and then we have to identify all the studies who evaluated that kind of hypothesis in the literature. Then later, we have to define the inclusion and exclusion criteria as we do for all different kind of studies. And then we have to abstract data from the studies we want to include in the systematic review or in the meta-analysis. And then if it's possible, and I will explain when it is possible, uh, to try to analytically uh, seen, uh, summarize the data by a meta-analysis. <coughs> so like, the literature uh, search looks to be the easiest uh, part of a systematic review of the or in a meta-analysis, but the truth is that it's the most important step, a step actually. Uh, because if we just forget to include one study or we uh, use wrong inclusion criteria to include one, to, to, to summarize evidences about one topic, the results of our systematic review or meta-analysis will be somehow um, uh, changed. So liter um, a comprehensive and reproducible literature search is the foundation for a systematic review. It's important not, not uh, just to check one database when we perform a systematic review and meta-analysis, and we often do this. We just go on PubMed and we see what it's published, uh, checking some keywords, but this is not enough to perform a systematic review and meta-analysis. It's, it's necessary to check more than one database because some studies could be uh, indexed on one database but not on the other one. Of course, the important studies are on all the databases, but if we want to be really rigorous to summarize evidence about one topic, we don't have just to include the important studies but all the studies available about the topic. So these are some of the uh, databases that are suggested to, um, to, to search literature, so PubMed, Embase, Cochrane Review, Easy Web of Science, Scopus. And it's also possible to include the evidence from not these classical uh, databases, but from trial registries, for example. Uh, on trial registries, for example, clinicaltrial.gov, there are results, numbers, of uh, on trials before getting the final publication of the of the study, so it, it, this is really important. Um, we can also check abstracts for meeting, personal references, uh, references from published reviews, meta analysis, and trials, and also even Google. This is called great literature, actually. In a systematic review and meta-analysis, there is always risk to have a bias. One of the most frequent biases is the English language bias. That means that 
papers published in English are more likely to be reported, of course. But if we want to perform a rigorous meta-analysis, we should check also the sources in other languages and then try to translate. The citation bias means that papers who are um, uh, more often cited from other papers are more likely to be included in systematic review meta-analysis, just because it's easier to find them. And then we have a publication bias. That means that usually uh, uh, studies with positive results are more likely to be published, to be cited, and so to be included in the meta-analysis. This is another important step in when we perform a meta-analysis or a systematic review. That's the data collection. The variables of interest and thus the list of data to be extracted should be decided a priori. So uh, several investigators will contribute to the collection of data and they all have to use the same definition for the variables. So this has to be defined a priori. A data extraction form should be used so that the same data are extracted from each study and by all the reviewers. At least two independent readers should perform the literature search and the data extraction in order to be reproducible and accurate. If two reviewers disagree about including or not a study, this agreement between readers could be solved by agreement or by a third review. So um, it's in, when we perform a systematic review or a meta-analysis, it's important to include uh, several variables. Uh, of course, we have to include uh, and extract several variables. Of course, we have to include study characteristics, meaning that we will report for each study, of course, the author, the year of publication, the journal of publication, and important uh, uh, information, for example, the number of patients in each arm, the treatment performed, and this is very important if we want to perform a meta-analysis, so we want to calculate the risks and the duration of the follow-up. Then it's important to have uh, demographic and clinical characteristics, because this will be this will be very important to understand if there is space for confounders in this kind of analysis and if there is space for heterogeneity because if studies collect really different baseline characteristics, it's, it's really likely that there will be heterogeneity among the studies and we will not be able to give a, a, a very uh, easy interpretations to the results. And then it's important if we perform in particular, a meta-analysis to collect data about the outcomes, whole cause death, cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, stroke, etc. Um, uh, a meta-analysis and a systematic review is uh, a, a very um, has to be really rigorous. So uh, there are tools in order to estimate the quality of the the data that are included in the meta-analysis, and there are different. Um, actually tools to do that, and GRADE is one of that. It's a chart, and according the, 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 the these points reporting in this uh, list, you can give a score to the trials you are going to include in your meta-analysis to understand if that trial, for example, has a good or not so good uh, level of evidence. And of course, if your meta-analysis includes or only studies with low level of low quality, your meta-analysis will have a low quality. <laughs> so this is one of the most important uh, points in, uh, in a, in a meta-analysis. Actually, it's the evaluation of the heterogeneity. Um, and according to the presence or not of heterogeneity, we can uh, decide to proceed uh, from a systematic review to a meta-analysis. So it's very important to assess this. Um, so uh, what I mean is uh, if uh, we collect uh, 10 studies, and these are really, really different, meaning like um, the, the baseline characteristics of these studies are really different, inclusion criteria are really different, so they collect really different populations, and we try to summarize them, we will have some results, but we don't really know if they have kind of validity because actually uh, they come from very different studies, so it's difficult to summarize. So we should, um, this is called heterogeneity, and uh, uh, if we have a lot of heterogeneity regarding the outcome definition, for example, we want to pull data from 10 studies and the event 
composite outcome is, is defined in a different way across all the studies, maybe we cannot pull these studies because it makes no sense to pull data who have an outcome defined in different ways. Um, Another important point is to pull data from studies with very different sizes. If we have a study with 10,000 patients, a study with 1,000 patients, and a study with 100 patients, and we pull them, of course, the results of meta-analysis will uh, be the same of the results of the larger study. So does it make sense to have a meta-analysis in such a situation? Maybe not. Another important point is if the population characteristics, characteristics are really different. One trial just uh, investigating the effects of one drug in patients with diabetes and one trial investigating the, the, the effect of the same of the same treatment just in, in patients with hypertension. And we pull these things and I mean, will the, 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 will the pulled uh, results mean something or not, we, we cannot be sure. So these contribute to create this heterogeneity that's very important to assess in meta-analysis. So what is a meta-analysis? It's a quantitative approach for systematically combining results of previous research to arrive at a conclusion about the body of research. There are a lot of protocols in order to uh, perform meta-analysis in a standard, standardized way, and uh, PRISMA is one of the most used one, and uh, we have uh, this, uh, this list, and according to this, we can uh, write the results of a meta-analysis on our paper, and this really helps us, because uh, this suggests us which methods are very important to be reported, results, how should we report the results, and what is important to write where, this is also a very important point, and yeah. There are different types of approaches to perform a meta-analysis. Uh, usually what we read on papers are study-level meta-analysis. It means that the authors add data extracted from the original papers of each study. So it means that they didn't have access to the databases of each study incl included in, in the meta-analysis. And uh, then we can have individual patients meta-analysis. It means that the investigators had access to all the data of all the patients included in all the studies included in the meta-analysis. And um, then we can say that uh, uh, the, 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 the study level meta-analysis can be performed in different approaches. That's the frequentist approach, that's the most frequent, the Bayesian approach and the network, and we can have the network meta-analysis. What is the frequentist approach? The frequentist approach is what we usually find in the papers. Very simple, we have a model, we have an hypothesis, we just summarize the evidence coming from all the trials, and we get a pooled um, estimate, so a result that summarizes uh, the results of all the studies included in the meta-analysis. But we can have also a Bayesian meta-analysis. In, meta in the Bayesian meta-analysis, we summarize all the evidences coming from the trials we include in the meta-analysis, but we can also add some, uh, pre some prior uh, knowledge to this, coming from, I don't know, for example, ob observational studies. And then we combine all this and we will have the results of meta-analysis. Then we can have a network meta-analysis, and um, by network meta-analysis, it's possible to combine direct and indirect evidence for a particular pairwise comparison. And in the absence of trial involving a, dir a direct comparison of treatments of interest, an indirect comparison could provide useful evidence of the difference in treatment effects among competing interventions, and for uh, judges selecting the best choice of treatments. What does this mean? It means that if we have one trial, compare some trials comparing A, the treatment A with the treatment B, and then we have uh, some trials uh, comparing the uh, treatment uh, A with the treatment C, actually we can also compare the treatment B with the treatment C, because actually A is a common comparator. 
This is an example of network meta-analysis, and this is what I told you. Actually, we want, this summarizes uh, old uh, studies who compare to antipsychotic drugs. Um, there are pairwise comparison for all the drugs, but not for sertraline versus duloxetine. And actually, uh, sertraline and duloxetine, see if I found duloxetine, it's here, are not directly compared, but they have a common comparator, that's fluoxetine. So by a network meta-analysis, we can also get evidences about this indirect comparison. So uh, individual uh, patient meta-analysis, of course, is much better for, um, as compared with study level meta-analysis, because the level, the, the level of, ev of evidence is much better, and uh, we can, uh, um, uh, we have information about uh, all the patients, so it means that we can perform subgroup analysis and we cannot do really this with um, study level meta-analysis. And uh, we can also adjust the analysis and with study level meta-analysis it's really difficult to do that. And uh, it's, um, it's possible to uh, actually check for interactions. And uh, here we can consider the follow-up the length of the follow-up that it's really difficult to do with study level meta-analysis. So these are the be benefits of individual patients' meta-analysis. They allow to carry out time to event analysis. We cannot do this with study level meta-analysis. Only a practical way to do subgroup analysis, more flexible analysis of outcome, ensure quality of randomiz randomization follow-up, ensure appropriateness of analysis, better compliance in providing missing data, and it's very good because it creates collaboration on further research. So with this, I thank you very much for your attention. And tomorrow, we will learn together how to practically perform a meta-analysis. So if you have any questions, otherwise, we will do this tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>